Hey, this is Todd Anderson. I just had the pleasure and honor of interviewing Miles J. If you don't know who Miles J is, um, well, you can look it up on the, on the internet. Um, his website is milesj.net. You might be, uh, for younger people, you might not know who he is, but he is a uh, a legendary, in, in my book anyway, anyway, a legendary R&B singer. And uh, Miles J will be here in Buffalo uh, on Friday at the 12th Music Hall. Um, uh, there's some information posted below uh, in this blog as to uh, how you can get tickets. And uh, here we go. Interview with Miles J. This is Todd Anderson, 93.7 WBLK. Hope to see you at the show. From what I understand, ticket sales are going well. So, you know, it's all good. It's all looking good. But um, I know recently they have my boy Glenn, and then they have my girl uh, Melissa. Yep. So, you know, I'm just pulling, I'm just pulling my weight, man, and <laughs> getting, my, getting my work in. All right, all right. Well, uh, you'll be just in time for the snow. Thank you. <laughs> so congratu- <laughs> congratulations. So that, that, means, that means I have to go deep into my closet to get out my galoshes and my mittens and my earmuffs. I, I would think so. Now, uh, yes, for uh, for anyone who's listening who's a little young, right, uh, you might want to explain what galoshes you are. Meant, you, meant, you meant like me, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like me and you. Um, there you go. But uh, you might want to explain what a, what galoshes are. Oh, not yet. No way. No way. No way. No way. I'm not kidding. No, you're not. No, you're not pulling me into that one. Listen, dog. I saw a, a, a episode of um, Ellen DeGeneres last week, man, and uh-huh. she did a whole thing about a movie that she saw was based on a book. Uh-huh. Then she had to explain to the young people what a book was. And she said, you know, you get it from like a bookstore, you know, a library. Then she had to explain what a library was. Oh, man, it was hilarious. Oh, so man. Let's that's... just say I got to bring out my snow gear. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. But you, you, That's funny, man. You are going to need the snow gear. You're here on Friday uh, at, the, uh, at the Trough Music Hall. Beautiful place. You've been right. there before? Never been there. Never been there. Yeah. Have you been to Buffalo? Man, yes, of course I've been to Buffalo. Buffalo's beautiful. And some of my favorite folks, man, Barn Hopper and folks like that. Yeah, this, Buffalo's a beautiful town. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. So my... In fact, not that long ago, I was up in uh, Rochester, and my dad was in Syracuse. You know, um, I almost went to Syracuse U, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, a lot of cats out of the city never make their way upstate. But, you know, I've spent a good bit of time Schenectady, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Hey, I always wondered, like, um, uh, I used to listen to you when I was in college uh, last okay. year. Last year. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is an internship for you, right? Okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> and, uh, man, you are, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say you're, a, you're a, a legend in my book. Um, oh, man, I appreciate that. Appreciate so, it, man. But uh, the name Miles J, is that your real name? My name is Miles. My legal name is Miles J. Davis. Okay, okay. And that's M-I-L-E-S-J-A-Y-E-D-A-V-I-S. Absolutely. Um, any relation to uh, to Miles? A soft relationship. And I say that because, you know, back in the day, your parents used to lie about who your uncles were <laughs> and who your okay. godfathers were. So, All right. yeah, my, my dad lied about, you know, Miles being my godfather. However... It was a wonderful lie, man. It was a well-intended lie. And actually, it was one that he could pull off. Most of my life, I believed it because of his association with Miles. And uh, he actually um, uh, took lessons from John Coltrane. So he was right in that mix, you know. Oh, right. And he clearly named me after Miles. He named my sister Cheryl after a Charlie Parker tune, Cheryl. So he was in that mix, man. So it was all love. And I got to, when uh, I had a beautiful photograph of, my father holding me and Miles standing there with his horn. Really? And, uh, you know, years later, I showed up uh, at one of Miles' art showings and showed him a picture, and he flipped, man. Wow. And she hit you know, so it's, it's a beautiful relationship. In fact, so much so that I've got a, a, a stage production called Meeting Miles Davis about really? that whole uh, relationship, and that'll be coming out in 2017. Wow, yeah, wow. Well, I'm, I'm glad uh, I... Yeah, in fact... In fact, your your listeners can check out some of the um, bio information on the new site, milesj.net. Not .com, but milesj.net. Milesj.net. Okay. Oh, All right. I'm glad, I, I'm glad I asked that question. Me too. Me too. Thank you. So, uh, so listen, um, 
something else people may not know. You were for a, a short time, I think, a short time, you were the lead singer for the Village People? No, it wasn't that short, man. It was two years, and, you know, it felt like Kent. So, um... <laughs> wow. I, mean, I, I say that affectionately because, you know, it was a different... I liken it to a Broadway show, okay? Uh, because, uh. um, you know what our perceptions are of, of the group, and overseas they call right. it camp. You know, call it what? here we just call it, you know, gay. You know right, 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 right. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Over, overseas, they call it what? C-A-M-P, camp. So we went to Australia. They say, oh, you know, this, you guys are so campy. C-A-M-P, you know. Okay. And it, it's it's uh, um, more used overseas than here, but here it means so they're pretty much the same thing. But now, you know, in, 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 in the new modern America, 21st century America, they just say that the guys are gay. So the, the background or the profile of the group was that there was always – Five out of six guys were gay. The cop, uh, Victor Willis, Ray Simpson, Valerie Simpson's little brother, okay. and myself, you know, were always the straight guys. Okay. But it, it made for a real interesting, I mean, I think they could literally do uh, a theatrical production, a Broadway production of the story of that group. How right. these two French guys, Henry Belolo and Jacques Morali, came to America, looked at what we were, what we perceived as our hero, the Marlboro Man, that was the cop. I'm sorry, the, the, the cowboy, the Marlboro Man. Right, I remember that, yeah. the soldier, the GI, you know, um, which was always a brother, believe it or not, Alex Briley. He's still doing it. Really? Um, and they just went down the line, the construction worker, and the Indian, and so on and so forth. Look, the concept was so strong, I just saw a recent commercial now, right, where this chick is selling this um, uh, mirror ball, you know, like a disco ball uh -huh. to these guys, you know? I mean, so they're still working, for crying <laughs> out loud, you know? Yeah. I know, I know. At least half of them are AARP, uh, but they're still, but they're still working. So now, bless their hearts, man. Now I saw you know, the uh, I, the guy who uh, who became the lead singer after you left. Um, I yeah. saw him on uh, what was it? It was a it was a TV show that uh, was reenacted. Um, uh, I think it's uh, what's my line or something like that, man. Where they had really? the, yeah, they had the three people and. You know, one of the people is the oh. actual person. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's my line? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, so they had the, the lead singer for the village people. They had three people up there. Ah. and <laughs> So, uh, ah. yeah. So the one guy, he had gained a lot of weight, but uh, it, that was, it was pretty interesting. Hey, hey, hey. There's nothing wrong with gaining weight. Watch that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Hey, listen, listen. That's a heads up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're a little bit, you're a little bigger. Uh, that's what you're trying Man, to say? Man, I, I put it this way. So now I'm fully grown. You know what I'm <laughs> when I was doing Let's Start Love Over videos and all of that business back then, I was still growing, man. So now I'm fully <laughs> set, you know? Plus, I, I'm my own security. So, you know, you got to be able to handle it. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I hear you, man. So listen, man, yeah. um, you know, back to this uh, this this uh, legendary status that you have, with me at least, um, and you. I'm sure a whole lot of other people, and um, because it. you've worked with like everyone, man, George Duke and Roy Ayers and Grover Absolutely. and like Absolutely. everybody. Branford Martellus, man, Branford's no slouch. You know, Rochelle Farrell, Phil Perry. Yeah, real deal. You know, real folks. Wow. That have, and I say real because these are guys that are, you know, so gifted that they are, you know, heads and, head and shoulders above the pack. And their their body of work speaks for, for itself, you right. know. and. Uh -huh. That then becomes my model, even with my heroes, you know, be it, uh, you know, Miles and Train and Diz and Cats from, from mm -hmm. that day all the way to, you know, uh, the, the Motown cast and the Philly International. You know, it, you, bottom line is you may make Michael Jackson and Prince Monty in this gig, but at the end of the day, what you leave is your legacy in your legacy is your body of work. Right, that's right, right, me. right, right. Okay, so, and in fact, that's what gets me out of bed in the morning is because I know there's always something else I can do. And uh, what I learned from the hip-hop cats is that there's nothing wrong with diversifying as well. So, you know, I'm writing books. I'm writing plays. Um, mm. I'm, in fact, I'm working on the film production of that meeting Miles Davis. So after right. this trip, I'm probably going to um, get back into New York and start filming my neighborhood in Brooklyn where I grew up, but also up on West 77th Street where Miles lived, you know? Wow. And then I'll have to get out to St. Louis mm. where he lived and then eventually Cali. But um, this is serious to me, man. And I love the idea that 
um, you can work as long as you're on this side of the soil. You know what I mean? Right, as right. long as you're standing on the soil, and instead of the soil standing on you, you know, there's right. something else that you can uh, do. So this is going to be my this is going to be my rocky comeback, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. In 2017, it's on. We got a formidable team, man, um, and we're putting it together. We ain't scared, dude. Um, I hear you. What I'm building as a legacy is not just music, but I call it Miles Lifestyles. Wow. So, dude, I spent last night making soap to bring to Buffalo. Handmade soap what? for your listeners. <laughs> really? I, today, I, I already got the oven preheated. Really? The cake that I'm bringing up. I call it Pound of Love Pound Cake. I'm, I've got my jar set for the candles that I'm going to make to bring up to you Miles Lifestyles, dude. And when we really? get to the wine, oh, it's going to be a whole nother ball game. I'm going to set a whole new model wow. for people that, it's a service industry, man. And yeah. with the country going the direction it's going, now more than, I won't say more than ever, but I'll say in the last 50 years, uh -huh. we're going to need cats like you and like me to make people feel good, okay? Right, 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 right. About themselves, about life, about this world, dude, because right now, folks are not feeling real good. Yeah, you're about right. About 2017. Yeah, you're okay? def you're definitely right. Yeah, we we don't really yes, know sir. what we don't really know what to expect. But we it's know It's a clarion call, man. It's it's time for us to come out and do our thing, dog. So it's a perfect time for you for you to ratchet, you know, Turn, what the kids say? Turn it up, baby. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. I'm turning it up, doing as many. You know, there was a time that you would do one CD for the label, yeah. and then two years later, it's time to do another CD. Right, man. I do as many CDs as I got. Two. I'm bringing <laughs> two new CDs with me. I'm bringing two new CDs with me, Tar. Two, and they both have tw They both have twenty tracks on them. Wow, twenty. Really? They're two double sets, back to back. One is instrument, a romantic. Well, this one is kind of, ooh, let me just put it this way. You you know what Karma Sutra is. Okay, so one yeah. of the tracks is Karma Sutra. Do you wow. know where that one's going? Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, I know what that is. It's, it's some Indian. For, for those that don't know, it's very sensual. It's very, yes. mm, 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 mm. Wow. Bubble bath, candles, wine. Okay, and the next one is called Heart and Soul, and it's a collection of everything going all the way back to I've been a fool for you, okay? Mm. All of love and romance. So that's my gig, man. I love to, I love my job. I love my life. I, I know we're, I know we're gonna hear I know we're gonna hear you sing. Um, do we get you? Do we? Yes, get, I'm bringing the violin. That's what I was gonna ask you. Do we, we get to hear you play the violin? Because I've never heard or seen that from you. I probably, I've, I probably heard it. I probably heard it, but didn't know it was you. Wait a minute. I, I'll tell you where you heard it. The first time you heard it was the introduction of I've Been a Fool for You 26 years ago. Really? That's the violin. Wow. Okay, that's me playing the violin. If you watch, the, if you go online to YouTube and pull up that video, the real, the real video, not just when, you know, the picture of the album cover. Okay. But if you pull up the real video, that's me playing the violin. Okay, okay. okay? So, all right. Um, no, that's for real. I'll be, bringing, I'll be playing keys, all right? So I'll be playing keys throughout a bunch of the songs, but then we've got a little segment where I'll be playing my electric violin. And if you haven't seen it, you know, and particularly for, you know, like you say, your younger audience, your millennials or what have you, right. you need to see a grown, I was getting ready to, ooh, whew, I was getting ready to cuss. You need to see a grown <laughs> black man standing there and with no punk, I ain't got no punk in my blood, honest to God. I just had all my blood work done. They didn't find no punk in it. Okay. Wow. Playing the violin. Okay. Like, Somewhere between a Zulu and a Gypsy. That's how I play. That's how I think. I play the violin like a warrior, like it's a weapon. I'm going to go this far. I'm going to say I love playing the violin more than I love singing. Wow, really? Now, hey, that's for real. Hey, Miles, hold on. All right, now you you also uh, you play the bass too, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. I won't be I won't be playing the bass Friday. Okay. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right, but yeah, I uh, uh, so. I'm gonna this this interview is actually gonna be uh, I'm gonna uh, do a blog uh, uh, relative to this uh, in, the, this interview I'm doing so uh, I'm gonna post that uh, that video with you playing the um, the violin, violin in this in this Ooh. blog yeah so that that should nice. be pretty good man we can't we we can't wait to see you man you are uh, uh, it's definitely a uh, an, an honor to have you here um, Appreciate I've it. never seen you live, but I'm really, 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 really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it. It's Friday. At, 
Friday. This is what I can assure you, Todd. Uh huh. It's going to be my vibe is it's going to be fun, man. You know, um, I can't promise the big productions. You know, like a lot of my lot. Um, you know, like a Luther or a Prince or my what? You know, those things have their place and they're, they're iconic. They're wonderful. You know, um, but what I can guarantee you. We have a ball. We always have fun. We get silly. We get crazy. We make the music. We sing the new songs. We sing the old songs. And we just carry on for about an hour, 15, hour and a half until we can't do no more. And my shirt is all sweat up. <laughs> and I got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I appreciate these type concerts more so than, you know, the big productions where you can barely see the person. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So up close, up yeah. close and personal, man. It's like it's a wonderful thing because it's intimate, and you know you feel like uh, you feel like the the uh, performer, like you, are really you know um, performing for me personally. It's uh, I try to make it feel like everybody showed up my house, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And we said, hey, let's do a set, and you know, <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's just, it, and that's why I call. It's just a feeling of warmth and hospitality. And it's the nice thing about it is, is first of all, it's reciprocal. Y'all are giving it. I'm giving it. Right. We're having a good time. And it's contagious. And I'll tell folks, if you're lucky and you didn't have a good time, uh, call the doc's office this morning. <laughs> take a Find out. Get some blood work done. Check your vitals. You know, because everybody in here got some. You know? And that's how I feel about it. Hey, man, you... um. Uh, what was I going to ask you? I just lost my question. Um, oh, oh, so you you obviously were uh, you know as a as a young boy um, around music. Um, you're telling me your dad had a picture with Miles and so on and so forth. Yeah. When when did you? I mean, how did you get started? I mean, when did you start singing or knew or when did you know you could sing? Because it's definitely a, a, it's definitely I, a gift that I, you have. I'll tell you why I feel so much stronger about violin. I started violin in the fifth grade, and I don't know, what are you, nine, ten years old or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was a little kid, mm -hmm. and it was a school program. It was one of the programs that, you know, in the big city now are missing. You know, they, right, yeah. they start you off very young, and they give you something to think about other than the things our kids are thinking about now. Yeah, I right? played, um, actually, actually, um, I played the uh, I played the cello uh, when I was going oh to school. God. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yep, yep. You can relate. And yeah. here's here's what's sad, Todd. How many kids nowadays cannot relate? I know. Okay, no one is putting an instrument in their hand and taking the time to show them how to finger properly, how to hold the bow properly. Think about how much you know about this instrument that kids have no idea what you're talking about right. nowadays. Never, never have they never have touched a cello, nor will they. Yeah. Okay, they won't ever go to a concert and see a cellist play. Like, mm -hmm. If and, and the sad thing, and I talked to I talked to the um, the, the uh, um, staff and the, there's a, there's a uh, HBCU here called um, Edward Waters College, mm -hmm. and I sit down with um, Dr. Glover and Dr. Grant, the president and vice president of student affairs, and I I just tell them what's missing mm -hmm. from their student body and that student life. And it's one thing to have a marching band. You know, I saw a drum line. I get it. Right. But you know what? There's nothing like seeing some of your kids playing the flute, playing the cello, playing the oboe, playing the violin. Right. Okay. And it could be Mozart, Beethoven, Bach. Yeah. Okay. But it could also be Duke Ellington and Count Basie. You see what I'm saying? Right. Right. Um, right. So, so there's a lot of richness that we're missing. Okay. And, I, it's, it's our fault. The young kids that are talented and moms come to me all the time, what should I do with my little, little boy? He plays the piano. She, or my daughter, she plays the piano. Are they taking lessons? No, no, no. They play by ear. They're really tough. Wow. And they play for the church. Everybody. Yeah, but you can't get a scholarship playing by ear. Yeah, you're right. Hey, man, have, have you ever heard of, uh, you heard of master class? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I man, you should do that, man. I mean, you should get on master class and it. and do the violin thing I'm, for the for 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 uh, young people, man. That would be you, that would you be. You know what? I I, I I do that every chance I get. Whenever someone asks, I run to the opportunity. In fact, here's I'm going to make you a pledge. Okay, mm -hmm. the next time I come to Buffalo, okay, I'll make sure you and I talk, and we'll get me in a day early. Mm -hmm. All right. And you set it up for me because, I, you know, I don't know where, but whether it's a 
uh, whatever level of school, whether it's a grade school or um, doggone head start, I don't care, all the way up through high school and in college, up, please set something up so I can interact with. I have a program I, that I call the, the Creative Zone. Okay. Well, I don't just talk about the violin. I don't just talk about the music. I talk about tapping that thing inside of you, right. that passion inside of you that will take you into the creative element of engineering, the creative side of law, the creative side of business, not just entertainment. Right, right, okay? right. So there's a, there's a creative, and I, I tell guys, I, I talk to basketball and football players of uh, teams, and I say, you know what, guys? You may not think about violin or music at all, but you know about LeBron, okay, or Magic, right. uh, or Julius, um, or Michael, when they get in that zone. When Michael starts raining threes, okay, or Steph starts right. raining threes, and they shrug their shoulders like, I don't know, I can't miss. Okay? Right, right, right. How do they get into that zone? And they think, well, they're just so talented. No, it's the work. Right, the, right. The talent and the potential is one thing, but it's the work that goes into it. And if the, if you know what I'm saying, so it, it's the it's the composite, it's the, it's that mix. Like I'm getting ready to mix this cake. You can't. It's not just one ingredient that makes mm. the cake. So right. we got to get our kids past the point where they're afraid to get their work in. Once they get that done, you put the work with the passion. They're unstoppable. Now on your website. Um what, tell me about the website. Was there uh, a lot of stuff on the website, like what you were just talking about? Uh, do you... No, but it's coming. It's, it's brand spanking new. It's okay. coming. You okay. can get on there and see the discography. You can get on there and see 30 videos, about 30 wow. video clips, okay? All the way back to Let's Start Love Over, I've Been a Fool for You, all the way up to some things that people didn't even know I did. I have some political commentary. The hmm. world is watching. Save our planet. Um videos on there because I don't just write about love and, and romance. Right. So uh, this website, and I am actively involved. There's my fingers that you see actively involved putting this thing, and we're going to constantly update it. We're going to get all Sandy's gigs on there for 2017. And, yes, I'm going to start to include the creative zone. I'm going to have Doug on the cakes, the soaps, and the candles on there. You kidding me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> all so, right, all right. And, and, and the importance behind that is not just of the hustle, what can you sell, what can you know, but it's taking away the barriers, okay, stripping away the barriers. They say, think outside of the box. I uh-huh. say, get rid of this box. Get right. rid of it. What good is it, you know? Well, I'll tell you what good is it. In the beginning, for the fundamentals, just like wax on, wax off, and I know the kids don't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> Karate kid. Uh-huh. Wax on, wax off. Okay, you explain that. Uh-huh. But yes, there's a place for the fundamentals. But like Bruce Lee, I know they don't know who Bruce Lee is. After you learn the fundamentals, you get into a, a mastery of a thing. Uh-huh. And then fundamentals just dissipate. They're gone. Okay? Because they're second nature. You don't have to think about your golf swing. Okay, now dress the ball. Okay, seat <laughs> uh, the shoulder width apart. Okay, no, you don't have to do that anymore. Right, right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So it's, and that's why you get to that gym, the first one to the gym, the last one to leave, because you've shot so many free throws. Okay. Sorry, Shaq. You've shot so <laughs> many free throws <laughs> that you can't miss. You know, or you or you shooting threes like that, and before the ball even goes to the net, he's already on his way back down court. He knows he's going in. Hey man, is there is there a village people uh, video that you're in, or do you have yeah. it on the website? I have I have a, a village people performance on the way. I'm not, hey, listen, I ain't shame. I ain't scared. It's on there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Yeah. Milesj.net. I got to check it out, man. Yes, sir. I'm going to put a link yes, on sir. the, uh, put a link in this blog that we're doing. But uh, we're, I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing you and meeting you on Friday, man. Um, hopefully the snow, Likewise. hopefully the snow will, uh, will fall and keep you here a couple extra days. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I, I can handle that. I can handle that, Todd. Hey, listen, Todd, just because we just did this interview, this won't be our last conversation, okay? Okay, okay. All right. Sounds All right, good, man. man. It sounds good. It's a, it's an honor and pleasure talking to you, Miles, and I'll see you on Friday, man. See you Friday evening, man. We can right. exchange information then. Peace. All right, my man. Thank you. God bless. Yep.